Okay, I'm just going to do a walkthrough of uh, using Tracker uh, on a video of one of the buildings of the World Trade Center and just to demonstrate how to do this. I'm in planning to include this video as part of the kit that I'm distributing so you too can do these measurements for yourself. So I'm not going to do a complete measurement, I'm just going to show you how to use the setup here. So this is Tracker, you can download it. Uh, from the internet for free. It's an open source program. It's available if you search on open source physics with and tracker, open source physics tracker, then it'll uh, bring it up. Download it for your system, whether it's Windows or Mac or Linux, and install it and so forth. Once you get it up and running, here's what we do. I, I take a, a, the video that I want to analyze. And I'm just going to drag it in here. And I'm going to be looking at Building 7. Uh, there it is. Uh, this particular video is a particularly nice one to use, by the way. Uh, it's tilted, which is interesting. Uh, the reason it's tilted is this particular camera was set up, it was focused and aimed, but then it was never leveled. And nobody was using it. Nobody was touching it the entire time. And so the view is particularly stable. If you track a point over here on a stationary building, uh, you'll find that there's a little bit of wander to that uh, point from uh, frame to frame. And the reason is simply because this is a telephoto lens over a long distance, and so there's some turbulence in the air, and the image uh, wobbles around a bit. However, if you use a different uh, uh, video where there's an actual operator even if the operator is trying to hold the camera steady, there's going to be little tiny movements. And the amount of movement of a reference point over here is going to be pretty dramatically larger. So uh, this is an excellent, stable uh, view. NIST, by the way, uh, in, they labeled this particular view camera 2. And uh, this is the one they should have used to do their measurements. They actually used another one called camera 3 is what they claim they used. I tend to think they must have used both of these somehow, but okay, let's uh, not go there right now. I just want to show you how to use this tool. So this tool enables you to track frames. So uh, the frames of the video, if I just play it here by clicking the little green button, you can see the smoke moving. And as this uh, cursor goes along the bottom, eventually this thing is going to drop. Let's wait for it to drop. And there it goes. All right, so anything that moves, you can track it. And when you track it, you're putting points on the video. So you're locating a position and it's at a particular frame. So you're locating a time. And if you know position and time, you can calculate speed. In fact, the, the program will calculate the speed for you. And then if you look at the slope of a velocity or speed versus time graph, it'll give you the acceleration. So you can figure out the acceleration of the building, you can figure out the speeds of various things uh, on the Twin Towers. If you watch the little jets come out, you can time them, say, how fast is that thing moving? Well, uh, you can figure that out. Okay, a couple of things. Let's bring this back. If I use the little indicator over here on the far left, a little black arrow with a bar, that takes you back to the starting point. Uh, if you use these, this little key here, that's sort of step forward, think single frame, single frame backwards. Let's go back to the beginning. Before I get started, I want to um, change some things around. This particular video is 30 frames per second. Actually, it's 29.97, but it rounds off to 30 frames per second. So if I go to this... Uh, a uh, little thing that looks like a movie clip here, a uh, movie film. And it gives some data about this particular video. And it says right there, 29.97 frame rate. And start time zero and so forth. And start frame. So one of the things I might want to do is move this thing forward until the action starts. Well, that's where the, the East Penthouse went down. Here, let's bring that back. So if you want to do some measurements that involve this East Penthouse over here, you might want to start earlier. 
if you only want to look at the collapse of the building as a whole, you might want to start later. Uh, let's say I want to use that as the start time. I look down here, it says frame 171, start time. If I put uh, uh, 171, too many zeros there. Uh, so, oh, wait a minute, that's the start time. Uh, the start frame is 171. 171. Okay. And by the way, I want to have the start time be zero. Uh, you can make the start time wherever you want. NIST uses the start time for when the uh, east penthouse, the, the dip in the penthouse just begins. So you could actually figure out what frame that is and then adjust the time so that comes out zero if you wanted. I've done that in a recent measurement. Let's just put zero here. Now step size. If this is 30 frames per second, that is going to be a problem because in 1 30th of a second, things are going to move so little that you have tiny, tiny movements which are overwhelmed by the lack of resolution of the picture. In other words, the size of the pixels themselves uh, are comparable to the measurements you're taking. So it's actually better. You'll get clearer results if you have a longer step size. So I take like a fifth of a second, which is two tenths of a second. So I'm going to say my step size is six. So if I take six frames, six times five is 30. Uh, so that's a fifth of a second. All right. So six frames per second for a 30 frame per second video should do it. Uh, the European videos are like 25 frames per second. So five, five frames would give you the same time interval. Okay, do I have everything I want? I'm putting the start time up here. I have the step size and so forth. Okay. All right. That's just going to make life a little easier for us. Now, the next thing I want to do is take, a, uh, take this tilt into account. So I bring the, this is the coordinate grid up here. Um, so I just click that and it shows so I can hide it. Okay, so let's display the coordinate grid. And I'm going to move it over here, and let's uh, zoom in a bit. And if I notice there's a little mark on this particular axis to the right, so that's the positive x-axis, and I can rotate this thing, and I can align it with um, uh, the edge of the building there. So that now is vertical. And so the measurements that the uh, program takes, it'll take this as the y direction, and this is the x direction. So it does the transformations automatically. I can move this around and it won't affect the, the things we want to measure, but I can position that wherever it's convenient. Mainly just get it out of the way a little bit. Next thing you need to do is calibrate. And I'm not going to actually do the calibration here because that's a little bit uh, involved, but there is a, a file that I include with my kit. I have all of this information. I have the video and the calibration data and some other things in a little kit where you can uh, get access to everything you need to do what I'm doing here right now. And in there, it, uh, uh, it has, for instance, the spacing of the windows. So in this case, the windows are sort of dark. It's hard to see them. So what I've done is expanded it. In fact, you could actually probably count windows right there. But uh, I did a frame grab, and then I put it in a program and brightened it so I can see these very clearly. So I can identify particular windows, rows of windows. And then if I come over here and I click that and I say New Calibration Stick, and what I do is I put uh, this one on a particular uh, set of windows and put this one on another one here. And then if you know how many floors you're talking about and you look up the data, um, how much uh, distance it is per floor, you can click here and set the, uh, the distance. It's important to have a real-world measurement of distance, like in this case, meters. You could do it in feet if you wanted to. I just use meters myself. It's easier in the long run. Uh, if you have data that's given in feet, convert it to meters, and you, you put this, this particular distance in meters, then the program knows so many pixels equals so many meters, 
and it'll give you all the real world readouts without your having to worry about any conversions yourself. Okay, well that's the main setup. Now what we want to do is create a marker and you can do multiple markers. Each one can be a different color, different shape, whatever. So let's set one up here to measure this corner of the building. So I come up here to where it says track and it says new. I'm going to say a point mass. Okay, so here, let's just bring all of this over. Uh, over here, it gives us for that point mass, it says mass A. But I can change that. This is actually the northwest corner of the building. The camera is to the north of this building. We're looking south along Manhattan. And this is to the right, so that's the west. So this is the northwest corner. So if I click on this, I can set various properties. I'm going to call this northwest corner. So NW corner. Okay. And if I wanted this a different color, I could set the color. If I'm tracking several things, I probably want to make them contrasting colors and so forth. Okay. So we're ready to start tracking. So what I do is, if I want to start, make sure this is set at the beginning. Uh, I'm going to zoom in so I can see the corner. And notice when I do that, that it's not really sharp edges. So uh, let's see here. This is zoomed in all the, as far as I can go. So let's back off a little bit. Sometimes it helps to just get the big picture rather than just the microscopic view. I'm going to take a point right about in here in the transition to be the corner of the building. And you can, you have to use your judgment and you try to maintain sort of a constant gray level each time to get a good reading. Okay, depending on the subject matter of your film, some pictures might have nice clean edges, but this doesn't. All right, so I'm going to put a mark there. So what I do is I hold the shift key down and notice the cursor changes. And I go, let's see, I'm going to go right about this level in here. All right, and it put the mark. And notice it also has a number, and it also still shows the mark. If I go to the next point, here I'm putting a number of marks on here. Each time, I'm just holding down the shift key and so forth. This is X. We don't want to, we don't care about X. So click on that. Let's say Y. That's going to be the height. But notice that a lot of there's a lot of clutter developing here. I don't want that. So if I hit the eyeball, uh, it tells you what you're going to be looking at. We're looking at positions. Uh, I'm going to turn off the labels. That's those numbers. And uh, here, let's bring this back. Uh, for trails, it's going to put long trails uh, trailing behind our position. I'm going to put no trails to start with. Uh, when we want to come back and look at what we've done, we can turn the trails back on. All right, so if I back up one, uh, okay, there was the last point we plotted. So I go forward one. So here's the new spot. So shift, bing, shift, bing, shift. I'm just sort of crudely putting them on here. I'm doing this just to be fast. We're not getting real good consistent measurements. But by the way, or I'm going to do a few more before I comment. At some point here, it'll start going down. And there it goes. You can see it's going down. And notice as larger measurements start cropping in, those earlier uh, measurements sort of start shrinking into insignificance back there. There's still a bunch of noise, but uh, let's pause right there. Now, if I want to go back and uh, clean this up, so I just sort of was doing this. Um, here, let's go to the start. Um, here, let's uh, zoom in. If I come back and grab this point, I can move it around. So I can come back after the points are there and I can clean it up and say that's the point I want to use. And you can just step through it and and say, yeah, let's move that back down a little bit. And whatever. You can see it is jumping around. And so you can clean up your data and um, 
you just try to get this uh, to be a consistent measurement. And then over here, we have the y versus t. That's the height. Down here, it says y. Let's change this to v sub y. That's the velocity. This is computed from this data. Uh, and so notice that uh, we're basically hovering around zero velocity, except for the noise in there. And then it turns a corner and it starts down. What that means is you're picking up downward velocity as you go. All right. Up here it says plots. And there's two of them. Let's just make one of them. Let's just do this one as the velocity graph for a minute. Uh, that's the wrong one. That's v sub x. Here's v sub y. All right. What if I want to know what's the slope of this line? I can right click on this graph, come down to where it says analyze, and it brings up, it's actually a separate program that's bundled with tracker. It's called data tool. And uh, up here, uh, it shows the graph in more detail. Over here's the, the data. Here's the t and the v sub y that's been computed. By the way, remember that's a computed value. Uh, so each point is computed based on the slope from the prior point to the following point. And that gives you what the speed is here. Okay. All right. If I go to analyze and curve fit, and I'm going to choose a line, that's going to choose the best fit straight line. And by the way, make sure this little checkbox is checked down here. It says auto fit. So now if I want to say, let's, uh, I'm just using my left mouse button. Say, what's the acceleration during this part of the fall? All right. Um, so this says minus two. Oh, yeah, that's why uh, we're not going to get good numbers here because we didn't really do a calibration. So right here it says it's minus two. Um, and then it says E minus one. Or so that's 10 to the minus one. So move the decimal one point to the left. So this is point two in whatever units we're particularly using right now. If you do the calibration, you should get for this uh, slope right here something pretty close to G, which is 9.8. And I'll leave it to you uh, when you start doing the actual measurements to see what you get. So what you're basically doing, I'm just sort of showing you how you plot the points. This data tool is how to do some basic calculations on it. You need to know enough physics to realize that what you're looking for is uh, to get acceleration, you're going to need to get velocity as a function of time. So get the velocity here, time over here. Okay. Um, if you get position as a function of time, the y position as the height as a function of time, the slope of this graph will give you the speed at that point. So I've rambled around, but hopefully in some of that rambling, um, you're getting uh, a little familiar with the kind of processes you're looking at here. If I save, uh, it'll ask me if you want to save the tab or do I want to save the project. And let me give you a hint. If you save the tab, you'll get the enough to uh, bring it back up again and continue working on it. But if you move things around, uh, if the video that you used as your source gets separated, uh, you're in trouble. So if you save the project, what it does is it takes all the files that you use, the data, your markings, the, the video, and so forth, and it zips them all together into a nice little package. So I have started uh, everything I save. I save it as a project. And so here's the project named. I'm just going to call this one test because we're not really getting anything real here just yet and um, save as and then it'll well whatever you can navigate to where it is on your disk where you want to put it i'm not going to give you a grand tour of my disk i'll just back out of that so in any case you can um, you can save what you need and work on it some more and give it to somebody else to run it if they have tracker so uh, i think i'll stop there uh, uh, and if you get into this and want to use it for other things, there's a whole lot more. You can do automatic locating and tracking of a point and so forth. It works sort of okay. You have to usually go in and make adjustments after the fact. But there you go. All right. Uh, have fun using Tracker.